paper one, question number one. In this question, the screen is perpendicular to the line joining sources S1 and S2. And since it is given that 3 lambda is far far less than capital D. Therefore, the path difference at this screen is 3 lambda cos theta. The maximum possible phase, uh, maximum possible path difference that can be created is at point O. That is 3 lambda. This path difference at point O is 3 lambda. So as we go, as we move up, the path difference goes on decreasing. So the nearest maxima is second maxima, second order maxima, where path difference will be 2 lambda. So from diagram, you can see the 3 lambda cos theta is equal to 2 lambda. It means cos theta is equal to 2 by 3, from which we can calculate tan theta, which is y by d. And from here, you get your answer A, option A. Okay, question number 2. The graph shows velocity of particle versus x. In fact, velocity of particle and wave velocity are related to this relationship where del y by del x represents slope. According to question, during the first part, velocity of the particle has been shown positive, which means slope of the graph. It should come out to be positive. Secondly, according to the graph, the width of the pulse in first half is more than the width of the pulse in the second half. So, the option 1 is the most appropriate answer. Slope is positive and in second part, slope is negative. Width of the pulse is more. In second part, width of the pulse is smaller. So, option A is the most appropriate option. In question number 3, we have been asked to find out the field inside material of the conductor and it's the property of the conductor that field inside its material is 0, resultant field is 0. That means at point P, field of all the charges, charges present as well as charges induced must be 0. That means field of charge Q which is present at the center of the cavity plus field of the charge Q0 plus all the induced charges appearing resultant field should be 0. That means we are indirectly required to find out the resultant of these two fields. That means E induced becomes minus of field of charge Q and field of charge Q0 which can be found out from the formula for field of point charges. Thus our results, result becomes E induced is equal to minus of field of this charge Q will be equal to 1 upon 4 perhaps not Q upon A square I cap and field of Q0 becomes 1 upon 4 pi of snot Q0 upon R square minus I cap. This is the resultant field. So our option is C, answer C. Question number 4. In this question, current is passing through a conductor that has non-uniform density, resistivity rho, a non-uniform resistivity rho. Electric field E is given by rho j vector. In fact, cross-sectional area is constant, therefore current I is constant. That means j is constant. That means now E depends on rho. 
according to question rho 2 is less than rho 1 that means electric field e2 is smaller than e1 since rho 2 is less than rho 1 that means e2 should be less than e1 that means field inside material rho 2 should be smaller and in material 1 it should be greater secondly there is always accumulation of charge. Now we have to draw the field line pattern. Keeping in view the nature of charge is accumulated. The field inside rho 1 is stronger. That means induced charges are helping to increase the magnitude of field. And in material rho 2, field is smaller. The same induced charges are reducing the magnitude of field in this material. So this should be the net pattern of electric field lines, which is our option number A.